Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen, he's back. He's more powerful than ever before. It's Riano Keeves back in Skyrim to increase his power level even further. That's right. In the last episode, we made him quite possibly the most powerful being in the known universe with the ability to punch a hole in time and space itself with his bare hands. We created a set of braces so powerful that the wearer could achieve the damage cap with just one single swing. That's how powerful we made Riano. No keeves. Equally, he has the most health imaginable, making him basically immortal. This man cannot be defeated in combat. But today, Riano Keeves is going to do something he's never done before. We're going to take Riano Keeves on an adventure in Skyrim to see if we can create the 1000 degree knife. I know, you might remember that 1000 degree knife from such YouTube hits as the entire trending page throughout an entire period of 2019 or 2018. Goodness, I can't remember what day it was on the internet. But nonetheless, you're going to be joining myself and Riano Keeves today on our fantastical adventure through Skyrim to become the most powerful being alive thanks to a little help of just a common household knife. Naturally, you're going to be joined by myself, the Spiffing Brit, as well as my fantastical ever-refilling mug of Yorkshire tea. Mmm, I drink it so it gives me powers. Anyway, let's get on with the video! Oh, look at that camera pan. And uh, we're out of the world now. God, I love this game. So, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while, but Skyrim hasn't really changed that much since we last played. It's been far too long in my opinion, but we are still by far the most powerful being in the known universe with the ability to defeat just about everything. You know, it's probably best we demonstrate our abilities with, say, this white run guard over here. Hello, my friend. Fwa punch! And he's dead in one go. Yeah, it's as easy as that. Oh, did anyone spot that? No, that's fine. So why is Riano Keeves just so powerful? Well, it has quite a few things to do with the items of clothing which he wears. Riano Keeves wears a nice little hat which improves created potions by 25%. That's not much, but it could be better. The real power of Riano Keeves comes in the form of these leather braces here. Created potions are 6,000% more powerful. Now that is very useful. Equally, we have a necklace and some silver rings which do basically the same thing. We also have one silver ring which improves pickpocket success chance by 10,000%. And of course, I forgot we have the Yeet Force 90,000, a legendary set of heavy armor gauntlet which mean unarmed strikes do, um, yeah, a, that's a lot of damage. But we're not here to use our unarmed strikes. Instead, we're going to be using a basic crappy sword and going on an adventure to secure a knife in Skyrim. You see, there are many different forms of knives in this game. We could go for the humble dagger, but a humble dagger, in my opinion, is not a true knife. What we are searching for is an actual stabby knife. Sadly, there's only about five of them in Skyrim, so we're going to have a challenge to find just one. That's exactly what we're going to do. So away, Riano Ki Eves goes. Oh, it's been been so long. I'm so excited. I haven't even reminded you all to sit back, relax, and even give a like to the video. That's just how much I want to dive into this world. Mostly just because we're literally running around with a god. But you know, remember, this isn't a god who we've kind of made this way due to cheaty console commands or modding of the game. This is actually just a 100% developer-approved way of playing Skyrim. Technically speaking, we haven't done anything the game says you shouldn't do, and it technically isn't cheating either. It's just creative use of some mechanics in the games. Right, so our first destination is going to be to grab that knife, and there should be one knife positioned all the way over in Solitude, so we're going to be running on over to Solitude to be borrowing that knife. Now, there are, of course, a few different ways to get to Solitude. Uh, we can take the fast travel system. Instead, we're going to take horse travel. Oh, I accidentally stole this horse. Um, oh, well, I'm sure no one will mind. So what you want to do with your horse is simply take it to this rock, push it over, and then sink the horse into the floor, and then escape and get off the horse. And now what as our character phases into the Shadow Realm, and hopefully we'll be one step closer to Solitude. Game, have you crashed? Game, Todd, respond to me. Oh god, the console's not even working. He's trying to lock me out of the system. Look, I know Riano Keeves is very powerful, Todd, but you've just got to let him be. I know you made a fantastically perfectly balanced game with no flaws whatsoever or even exploits, but uh, uh just allow me to cheese the systems, please, Todd. Oh god. Wow. We've actually made it, although uh, my horse is in a bit of a unique situation. Not sure how gravity is taking effect here, but nonetheless, thank you, Skyrim. So, we've arrived at a very unique place. You might recognize us immediately, and if you do, Jesus Christ, you've probably played far too much of this game. But hey, this is the lovely trading docks just south of Solitude. Now, in the warehouse over here, there is a very special, unique item which we're wanting to get our hands on. So, let's go say hi to this fantastic area. It's basically just a trading company. They own a dockyard, and probably not going to be too happy 
Who me digging about their warehouse, but you know, good old East Empire Company, 100% not ripping off a completely different company with a similarly sounding name. I know what your game is. Anyway, we need to make our way inside the lovely East India Trading Warehouse to find ourselves a knife. Now, getting inside would actually be quite a challenge. Not too sure just how well we could go about doing this, but apparently, if I crouch here, I am actually completely invisible to everyone. So I'm just gonna break my way inside of here. Let's drop down a quick, quick save though. I'm not particularly sure why the game allows me to do this, but you know, it does. And wow, yep, it's as easy as that. Let's go inside the East India. Let's go inside the East Empire Company warehouse. I, my brain wants to keep calling it the East India Company warehouse, but you know. All right, now that we're in here, fantastic. Where is my stabby knife? Also, I should probably level up because I have a bunch of spare skills. And as you can see, our health is, uh, it's quite good. Our alchemy is not too bad either. Now, in one of the buildings on the upper levels around here, there is a, why the hell is there a goat in here? Sorry, this is a warehouse. Why is there a goat? You know, I'm just not going to ask any questions. Oh, there's a guard. Oh, he wants me to leave. Well, it's fine because I can just stealth away. And for some reason, I'm really good at stealth. Anyway, I'm out of here. Oh, God, there's another one. Crouchy times. Oh, and now they want to fight me. No, no, I'm just leaving this place. Please ignore me. I'm looking for a knife. That is all. Is it up here in this hut somewhere? On this table, maybe? No, I think it's the other side. Anyway, I'm improving my stealthy abilities. Just going to sneak our way around this warehouse. Do, 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 do. Don't mind me. I'm just a very large, ridiculously powerful man sleuthing around. You shouldn't ask any questions. Okay, right. I didn't want to have to do this, but if you're certain, I will have to punch you. Oh, this is awkward. All this for just a knife. And I'm pretty sure it's up in this house and everything. Sorry, excuse me. Just let me through here. Uh, what do we got here? Iron dagger, some gold. Oh, a dock work is here. It's okay. Just please ignore me. You can't kill me, so you shouldn't really try. Okay, look, please stop stabbing Riano Keeves. Your knives do nothing. Please. Please, I don't want to have to do this. Can't we just talk about this? No, nope, don't have a chance, do I? Oh, great. Fine, you leave me no choice. <sighs> Great, a thousand bounties now added. Go away, guard. Last witness killed. Oh, the bounty's been removed. Fantastic. Anyway, over to the other building. Oh my god, I just checked the wiki. The knife's not even in the warehouse. It's outside of the warehouse, back the way we came. Oh. Right, right, okay. I need to go back round. Wait, what is that? Is that the goat in the water? Seriously, what is the goat doing in here? Oh, the guard's here. Oh, I can pay off my bounty of one gold. Sure, I'll do that. And now it's just gonna teleport me back outside the front door, please. Please don't throw me in the middle of nowhere, Skyrim. Nope, you've thrown me right into the middle of solitude. Fantastic. All right, fast travel down to the warehouses. And yes, it should be inside of this building here that we find our fantastic knife. So let's go up to the second floor. And here we go. On a plate, we have it. Yes, the knife. This is one of four knives in Skyrim, which actually can be wielded as a weapon. And as you can see, it's uh, it's unique. It's pretty tiny, pretty small, pretty stabby. Its biggest drawback is that it only does two damage, meaning it's not actually that powerful. What is my horse doing there? Put into perspective just how weak this weapon is. Let me drop down a quick save and demonstrate. Stab, stab. It's really not doing much here, if I'm being honest. Yeah, uh, we, we can't fight people. This, uh, this knife's not going to be enough. Like, even with like a really heavy power swing. Sure, we can kill someone. It's just going to take half an hour. Anyway, now that we have our knife, it's time for us to travel right back to Whiterun, as we have some science to do. Well, actually, before then, we should probably see about trying to duplicate our knife. You see, there are a handful of ways to duplicate items in Skyrim. One way is to use the Whiterun doors trick if you have a couple of followers. However, I prefer to use the autosave item duplication glitch, which is a bit temperamental at best, but when it works, it really works. So what you want to do is you want to drop your item, then pick it up, wave it in front of you, and then press the autosave button and then immediately spam the E key and hopefully the amount of times you press the E key is the amount of times you're going to get this item so and if we check our items and go to weapons, nope, we only have one knife. Fine, we're going to have to duplicate it via the other boring means. Now, after a while spent duplicating knives using the uh, white run doors slash just slowing down my CPU with a bunch of throttles and spamming the F5 and pick up key, I've managed to get myself five weapon based knives to work with. Now, knives are good fun. You can do a lot with a knife. And so we're going to do a crazy amount with our knives because you see by itself, a knife isn't actually all too powerful. Just two damage, it's not going to really kill anyone. Or if it does, it's going to take you about half an hour. It's a, honestly about as effective a weapon as a small potato vaguely resembling a shiv. Now, with our five knives, we're going to make some knives of basically varying degrees of impressiveness. At the moment, we don't actually have any items on which are going to make our enchantments any more powerful. And consequently, we're going to be making the lowest quality flaming knife actually imaginable. So for that, we're going to want our basic knife, our enchantment of fire damage, because of course, at the end of the day, that's basically just heat. 
eat. And yes, it would appear if we use our fantastic grand soul gem, we can make it so that our knife can deal 20 points of burn damage to a target. So let's rename this item. This is no longer just a knife. This is going to be the level 10 knife or the 10 degree knife. It's nothing too powerful. Honestly, it's just going to feel like a slight tingling burning sensation. So all in all, not the best knife in the world. However, I do believe we still have an enchantment potion lying around somewhere. Ah, here we go. For 30 seconds, items enchanted are 3,000 times stronger. Now this seems more like it. And you know what? I think we're going to chug that potion to just see how powerful an item we can enchant when we chug our glorious potions. Now this is only going to last 30 seconds, so we need to be quick with this one, ladies and gentlemen. Right, Rihanna Keeves, chug the potion, which is temporarily going to make you the greatest enchanter the world has ever seen. And let's go make ourselves a knife. So we go into our arcane enchanter, grab our item of knife, enchantment of fire damage, soul gem, of course, 7,000 something charges. I want soul gem, grand soul gem. And then can we rename item? I want the 100 degree knife here because I reckon we can go higher than this. And let's hit craft. Okay, bam, we've just made ourselves the 10 degree knife as well as the 100 degree knife. One can only do about 20 worth of fire damage, the other can do about 7,000. As you can guess, one is slightly more powerful than the other. So we've actually been given a mission by the Jarl to defeat a bandit camp, so we're going to go say hi to them. It's just a simple case of kill the bandit leader at the Silent Moon's camp. We can do that, no problem. All right, here we go. It's the Silent Moon's camp. I'm pretty sure we did come here once before and murder everyone, so there's probably not going to be too much conflict, if I'm honest. Oh, wait, no, they've got someone up here doing something. What's going on in here? Oh, fantastic. We've got a bunch of bandits. Okay, right. Let's hit them with this knife. Okay, evidently the knife in my uh, right hand is the knife of immediate death. And this one, oh, that's the 20 points of fire damage. There we go. The 10 degree knife, it's okay. Couple of swings to murder someone. 2000 degree knife, well, it just immediately murdered Janassa. Rest in peace, Janassa. F in the chat, ladies and gentlemen. That is not the death pose I think any human being wants to go into. Oh my god, your spider is not going to be happy with that. This man, even worse back posture. My goodness, have these people never even visited a chiropractor? This is terrible. Anyway, this is good. It would appear we uh, murdered a huge quantity of bandits, but we still haven't killed the leader of them. So we're going to go and have to find him, and I do believe he's going to be hiding down below. Although already I can kind of tell that our weapons are pretty powerful, but they could be better, couldn't they? Right, where are those bandits? There we go. We've got a bandit outlaw here. Let me just uh, slash you with that. Okay, right, I'll finish you off with a proper one. And who are you? You're just bandit. You're dead immediately. Oh, I killed the bandit leader. Oh, fantastic. This was actually ridiculously easy. I don't even remember killing anyone called bandit leader, but you know, apparently we did. Anyway, sweet. That was a glorious success. Let's go collect our bounty. All right, what are you going to give me? A hundred gold? That's all? My weapons are incredible. You need to pay me more. Do you have no idea how much the hundred degree knife costs? Oh my god, the hundred degree knife? The hundred degree knife is actually only worth 361 gold, whereas the ten degree knife is worth 545. I'm sorry, but what broken economy system is this? This one does 7,000 points of fire damage. This one does 20. Skyrim, can you not evaluate the difference in power level between the two? Oh my god. <laughs> this guy, the amount of side eye I'm being given by Preventus at the moment. This is just downright silly. Anyway, fine. Let us make an even more powerful knife. One which even they won't be able to contend with. For that, we're going to need to put back on all of our alchemy stuff because we need to make ourselves another enchanting potion. But this time, even more powerful. So I want my silver ring of increased potion creation, as well as my leather braces of increased potion creation. And you know what? I think we're ready. We're ready to use the alchemy lab. Get off, Farangar. You're just making garbage. I know what I'm making. I'm making true science. I'm putting knives together, and we're making them the most powerful weapon in all of Skyrim. Although not that any of you seem to understand what that means. Anyway, we can actually make a fortify enchanting potion. We have the ingredients left over. However, if we were to make it... Oh, this isn't the best. It would only be that items enchanted to free and stronger and that's uh, already what we have so do we have anything else which is better we'll make one fortify restoration spell crafting this one potion is actually a hundred thousand gold worth of potion so that's kind of just a demonstration of what we're working with here and already we're just going to chug this bad boy oh right this is going to be a lot increased potion making of about twelve thousand percent back into the alchemy lab let's make ourselves a potion all right fortify enchanting bam 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 craft is this going to work okay apparently the restoration potion hasn't actually triggered but 
because our circlet here, which normally provides only 25% improved alchemy, is now offering 3,000. Same for the leather braces. So we're just going to basically wear them and put them off and on again. And hopefully this should be enough to kick the game into actually realizing just how powerful we are. Bam, bam. There we go. That's more like it. Items are enchanted a 30,000% stronger. Let's also make a uh, forge one as well for no particular reason. Actually, we've just made a potion of damaged stamina. I like the look of this. What on earth is this? We've just made a brand new potion. You know what, whilst we're at it, let's just mix a couple of random ingredients together. Bone meal and Daedra heart. Craft it. Created a potion of resist fire. Okay, let's mix a couple of other stuff. That one just failed. That's okay. Potion of restore health. I like the look of that one. <gasps> Created a poison of damage health. There we go. We've made some pretty incredible potions just over the last couple of seconds. Some of which I'm very happy with. Yeah, some of them are just downright going to be stupid. Like the poison of damage health and the poison of damage stamina. These are just crazy. Because, I mean, you drink this and you immediately die. But for a brief 30 second window, you become the greatest enchanter the world has ever seen. Almost as good as our potion of paralysis, which lasts 3000 seconds. But I reckon we could make a better potion of paralysis. There is one thing I would like to try though, and that's with our fantastical silver ring of pickpocketing, which basically means our pickpocketing success is 10,000% better. And there is a skill in pickpocketing where basically if you drop a potion into someone's pocket, they immediately receive the effects of the potion. So I've invested a perk point into basically making myself the best pickpocket in the world, and I think it's time we actually try out our glorious pickpocketing abilities on just some random unknown person. So let's find a useless random white run guard like good old Dave here, doing his patrol of the walls. He's doing great, he's having a lovely day, the only downside is we're about to drop something in his pockets. No, we're not dropping the enchanter's draft in to make Dave a really good enchanter, we're also not going to drop in just a regular poison because that's boring. We're dropping in the poison of damage health. You see, Dave, for a brief period of time, is actually going to drink the most valuable potion in all of Skyrim. Valued at roughly 19 million gold, Dave is hopefully going to be hit with a potion which causes 1.5 millions worth of poison damage. The only downside is, due to the value of this potion, we actually have a 0% chance to place. So, due to the immense value of the item we're putting into his pocket, for some reason that's how Skyrim basically actually calculates whether an item can be placed in. Not its size or its weight, just the actual value. Consequently, we're going to try and drop in this potion of just immediate death, and there's a chance, in fact there's a very high 100% chance that he's going to notice this, but let's give it a try nonetheless. Oh wait, this is just poisoning my knife. No, 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 no. I want to give. Oh my god, it just works anyway. Well, he's dead. What a shame. For one brief moment, he was technically the richest man alive in terms of just value of potions contained in body. Oh, hello, courier. You're looking for me. Um, please ignore the dead body behind me. Great, he gave me an item. Oh, and also the courier is famously someone you can't actually kill, so um, I'm going to try and instead hit him with a legendary potion of paralysis. We've got a 0% chance to place, but you know, it's worth a try. Bam, give it to him. And he's gone. <laughs> you see, you can't actually kill the courier, but what you can do is you can turn his body into just uh, a potato. Um, he's not looking the best at the moment, I must say. Yeah, let me quickly clean up his body. All right, bam. I'm just gonna drop this on the floor uh, and then just there we go. Push it this way. Get rid of it. Come on. Go away. Go away, Mr. Letterboy. No, basket, come back. No one will notice. He just, he slipped and fell. It's quick, someone help him. He's fallen and he can't get up. Oh my god, Curry, go in the water. Go in the water. Get in there. There we go. He's in the water. Lovely. Oh, look at him swim. He's having a lovely swim right now. Yes, that is, that is not how bodies float. But you know, that's fine. This is fine. <laughs> anyway, um, I'll see you later, Curry, in about 3,000 seconds time when you eventually wake up. Anyway, let me quickly hit, um, good old Heimskir here with the potion of stamina. Bam, let's go to potions and drop our potion of damage stamina. There we go, give it to him. And wow, he's fine. He just took one millions worth of stamina damage and he's still standing. What an incredible man. You know what, I'm not going to ask any questions. Maybe no one realized just how powerful that man is. Also, God, please ignore the floating, uh, floating very rigid messenger in the water. God, I love potions. They're great fun. Anyway, it's time for us to do some enchanting and potentially cause the game to crash at the same time time. So let's get our potion of enchanting, which uh, is going to make items enchanted stronger by 300,000% for quite a while. Let's quickly pop that one. Uh, and it's time for us to enchant yet another knife. 
This time it's going to be the 1000 degree knife. So we're going to get our knife, go to enchantment, select uh, fire damage. Uh, we need to drop this down just a little bit. There we go. Uh, that's perfect. Give it a grand soul gem and let's rename this item. This time it is the 1000 degree knife. Bam, perfect and craft. Oh yes, this is going to be a good one. Statistically speaking, this is a weapon which is going to do 68 million points of fire damage uh, just immediately, actually, all in one go, which is kind of ridiculous when you think about it. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. We have our 1000 degree knife. Skyrim's currently most powerful weapon by far, with a base damage of just three and a value of only 361. This is the most powerful weapon in all of Skyrim. Let's go give this bad boy a try. Now, I've moved myself over to a nice clear open space where we have a bunch of woolly mammoths and I'm going to try and defeat basically a very large amount of very mean beastie boys anyway let me just quickly uh, evaporate this mammoth with a knife yeah he's done for and uh, you too there we go and uh, we got another mammoth I'm sorry this is how you guys went extinct isn't it a guy with a tiny butter knife who has the ability to incinerate everything instantaneously I mean this knife is just actually ridiculous anyway I need to fight something big and powerful oh actually there's a messenger over there that's something easy to fight is there some trader on an escort mission with a dude helping him out yeah actually it's stabby time who are you imperial soldier and a noble you've nothing to say to me oh my god okay right sorry imperial soldier you're gone um your horse is now dead immediately <laughs> what on earth was that i'm sorry was the horse just standing there like okay right i need to let my owner dismount and only then can i commit die oh right Mr. Nobleman. All right, just, just come try, try. There you go. I can just block you with my butter knife. There you go. How does that feel? Can't even damage me. I mean, you, you haven't even got much of a sword yourself. You've just got a tiny knife. All right, let me um put you out of your misery. There we go. That's what you get for having only a steel dagger. I'm sorry, horse, though. That was uh, very funny. All right, so in this lovely open landscape, I have an idea. I'd like to try and fight a dragon, but not just any dragon, you see, ladies and gentlemen. A great big fiery dragon. The reason why is because when we were making our wacky potions, we accidentally created a potion of resist fire which um is unique because it's a potion of resist fire which is going to apparently negate 900 percent of fire damage for 60 seconds i'm interested to see roughly what that means admittedly riano keeps can't die anyway because he has about 2.4 million health but you know it's always worth a shot so here we have it i've just spawned myself a dragon and hopefully this bad boy's got some fire attacks in him but there's only really one way to know that's to have him actually fly into me come on he's looking a bit spindly and white so i'm hoping there's a bit of flame in him come on hit me with some flame god damn it i chose the frost dragon <laughs> come on come down here please let me hit you come here make it a fair fight i can't reach you up there oh you cheeky bugger there we go just land land there we go fantastic this is game balance let me hit your tail let me just hit your tail just a little bit god damn it there's not much reach on this butter knife oh i hit a wolf instead i've contracted rock joint <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Riano keeps. He sadly got early onset rock joint. This is terrible. Come on, frost dragon, come down here. What am I meant to do to you when you're flying around up there? Just land, land, please. Right, I'm gonna wait and one day you'll land. Right, I'm actually having to plink at you with a bloody bow and arrow because uh, you're an absolute pain. Fun fact when it comes to archery in Skyrim, if you ever wondered why there's um, not many exploits showing you how to get good at archery, it's because the fortify like archery damage exploit only goes up to about 256 because the archery skill in Skyrim is bugged and if you go any higher than that your bow and arrow is actually going to do less damage. Another interesting fact is that the skill is also bugged for archery and for some reason any skill which improves your archery damage also improves your unarmed damage which is pretty strange because that basically means if you want to go for an unarmed build just make a bunch of potions to increase your archery damage by 100% and suddenly your unarmed damage has increased by 100%. See that's an exploit I didn't even know when I made the last video. Let me try and of you. Come on, let me add it. Let me add him. Oh my god, let me add his bloody tail. No, this is just not going to work at all. All right, I'm actually going to have to summon the Ebony Warrior to help me fight a dragon, and then I'm going to have to kill the Ebony Warrior after he kills the dragon. Hopefully, that's how this is going to work. And right, here we go. We got the Ebony Warrior here. Now, Ebony Warrior, I know you want to fight me, but instead, could I please entice you to fight the dragon behind you instead of flinging my body around the bloody map, Mr. Ebony Warrior? Please. Why can I jump when I'm <laughs> trying to stand up? Okay, Ebony Warrior, we've had our disagreements in the past, but I just need a bit of cooperation so that we can deal with the massive frost dragony thing here, which is just doing circles and not much else in particular. <sighs> what? The <laughs> 
Have I just been hit by paralysis arrow? Oh god, Rihanna Keeves, no! Wake up, my boy! Oh no. Oh no, this is uh, this is not good, actually. Right, there we go, stand up. Why can you jump while standing up? Why is this okay? It makes the standing up animations very derpy. Alright, Ebony Warrior. I'm sorry, but... You need to, you need to get yeeted in one single swing, of course. Right, and can I have your bow and arrow, please? I need it. And the ebony arrows. There we go, I can kind of just leave the rest on the ground, but I'm going to need that bow and arrow to take down that bloody dragon. Oh my god, the dragon landed. The dragon landed. Oh my god, finally. Right, knife time. It's knife time, ladies and gentlemen. And a stab. And it's gone. Oh my god, next time we're getting a fire dragon. Nice dragons suck. These are terrible. When else would anyone want one of these in the game? Right, now can I have a flamey dragon? Right, bam, I've spawned an actual proper elder dragon, which this time is going to breathe fire. Come on, like dragons probably should do. Hit me with the flame. I want to know. Oh, you even land on the ground. That's nice. That's really nice of you. Right, fire. Amazing. Right, is it doing damage? Let's quickly check. Nope, it's done no damage. Great, so we can't even test if my potion of resist fire is going to even work. But for a brief period, let's try it anyway. Right, we can now resist 900% of fire and he's dead. We're going to need more dragons. Right, that's more like it. Seven elder dragons now to contend with a man who can one-hit everything and also can resist fire is immortal and there we go, that's more like it. Have we taken damage? We still haven't taking damage right hit me with the fire there we go that's a lot of fire now this is a huge amount of fire we still haven't taken any damage though um that's an issue I can't bite me physically bite me there we go just put it in my face Rihanna Keeves is lit up like a Christmas tree at the moment but it's not actually really killing him yep yeah, you know what this is fine this is perfectly fine um just one guy being lit on fires <laughs> Something almost relatively artistic about what we're seeing here today, ladies and gentlemen. Really is. It's, it's just modern art right now. It really is. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. This is a brief look into what Rihanna Keeves' soul is like. It's just a brewing fire, really. My goodness. Have we taken Skyrim too far? Probably yes, but the developers, you know, they don't mind. It's fine. Skyrim is a game which anyone can play in whatever way they feel like it. If that means seven elder dragons trying to defeat an immortal god, then so be it. You know, it's time to uh, clear up some of these dragons. Right, sorry, you're gone. You need to be gone too, sorry. You should get end up with a pile of dead elder dragons lying around here. If only this game would let you jump and swing and hit at the same time. Right, and you're gone. Oh, you're next. You are next. You should not have landed on the ground. There we go. Another dead one. Just three more to go now. Right, who's brave enough to land next? Oh, you are. What a mistake to make. Swing and hit. Perfect. Is there even any space to land which isn't just a dragon's corpse? Oh, you found a space. Good job, elder dragon. A swing and a hit. You're gone. There's like a brief flame from when the tiny fork hits them and incinerates their entire body. Watch this, there we go, bam. You see, there's a very brief period of flame and then the body kind of just jiggles around. Fun fact, I've never actually finished the main quest line of Skyrim because I got to the final mission of the game and then all of the AIs glitched out and I couldn't finish the game. Thank you, Todd Howard. I 100% still don't hold it against you and it's 100% not the reason why I make videos on your game where I find issues with them, I promise. God damn it, I want my fun back. You know what, I think that might be it for today's video, ladies and gentlemen, but Rihanna Keeves' adventure into Skyrim isn't over at all. There are a few more things I want to try out. I want to see if we can actually make archery a viable skill set in Skyrim and try and finish the game with about as many exploits as you're used to in these videos and with hopefully as much ease. And then there's also magic in Skyrim because you see in the previous Elder Scroll titles magic was literally a game-breaking thing which would take players from just having minor buffs and bonuses to genuine godhood and most of the time it wasn't even an exploit it was just intended use of game mechanics. Now of course when it came to Skyrim, Todd Howard saw this and decided to nerf it completely and utterly by making it so that you couldn't, say, levitate, you couldn't boost your own stats and so on, and also took away the ability to make your own spells, which is really disappointing. So the mage build of Skyrim whilst is still viable, it's 100% nowhere near as powerful as it should be. And so we could take a look into making it oh so more powerful, couldn't we, Rihanna? Yes, we could. I know you want to. I know you do. You really do. Your beautiful face. It's written all over that you want to become the greatest mage the world has ever seen. So I'll leave it up to you, the lovely ladies and gentlemen in the comments section down below. Do you want to see Skyrim with the incredible one-hit bow, or Skyrim with an actual completely crazy over-the-top mage build? I'll leave it up to you, the fantastic people at home. And hey, if you have indeed enjoyed today's video, then feel free to give it a like, because after all, each like actually keeps Rihanna O'Keeves trapped inside of Skyrim, because as we all know, if he was to ever escape, he'd immediately hunt down and evaporate every single being who saw his face and didn't immediately worship or press the like button. You have been 
warned, ladies and gentlemen. This man needs to be locked away, trust me. He's too dangerous to be kept alive. God damn it, I love the prequels. Anyway, as always, a massive thank you to each and every one of our majestic patrons who make all of these videos all the more possible. You are all absolutely fantastic people, seriously. Thank you very much for providing a bit more of a stable income for this fantastic job of YouTube, because, you know, it has a lot of ups and downs. It's very fun and wacky. And hey, if you're new here, do consider subscribing and joining our fantastic channel. It's very small, honestly. When we started this year, we were at only about 100,000 subs, and in my mind, I'm still at that same size, despite the fact that we now have over 1.1 million subscribers and are slowly progressing our way to becoming the tea-drinking monolith of YouTube. It's a terrifying thing indeed. So hey, why not join before we force you to join? And if you're wondering what video to watch next, look no further than this one on screen now. It's been hand-chosen by myself to be basically what you'd love to watch after you finish this video. Trust me, if you enjoy Rihanna Keeves and his silly adventures, this is the one for you. And hey, that's all. I'll see each and every one of you in the next one. Have an absolutely lovely day and goodbye for now.